Okay, we're going to talk about proportions and different ways to solve proportions. Um, there's a couple different ways that we can look at right now. Um, one of them is to look for relationship between the two. Once you set them up as like fractions, they're not really fractions, they're ratios, but to look between the two numerators and the two new denominators, like in, is, do I see something, a pattern from here to here? And I can easily see that right here, from 4 to 12, I'm multiplying by 3. So that means right here, I'm going to multiply by 3 because it's like an equivalent fraction except it's a ratio. So they have to be equal to each other. So that would be 27. And since this is talking about boys to girls, that would my answer would be 27 girls. Okay, my answer wouldn't be 12 over 27. This part is my actual answer. Okay, another way you could do it is to look for a relationship between the numerator and denominator of the ratio when you set it up as a fraction. So if I look, I can see that from 15 to 5, that's dividing by 3. So that means I'm going to do the same thing here, dividing by 3. And 21 divided by 3 is 7. So if I'm talking cats to dogs, that would mean I was solving for how many dogs, so that would be seven dogs. Okay, the other one that's new to us is using cross products. Okay, cross products, it's because there's an equal sign here, these across from each other have to be equal to each other. So what I mean is if I did, okay, multiplied these across, to uh, 25 hundredths times x is 0.25x. That has to be equal to the cross product of this, 2 and 1 tenth times 8, but times 8, excuse me, 8 tenths, I apologize. So 2 and 1 tenth times 8 tenths there's two decimal places, is 1 and 68 hundredths. So now to solve it, I would solve it like an equation. We've become pros at solving these equations, right? Because we've been doing it so much. So I'm going to draw my line. I know that I'm going to divide by 25 hundredths. So I'm going to divide by 25 hundredths, right? So that cancels out and leaves me with x equals, and now I need to do my division. So 1 and 68 hundredths divided by 25 hundredths. I have to get that decimal out of the divisor. So I'm going to move it two places to get it out, which means I need to move this one two places to get it out and then bring it up. Okay, so now 25 into 168. 25 does not go into 1 or 16. It goes in 168, think of quarters. So that would be six times to get $1.50, so $150. Subtract, and I'm going to get 18. So if I have that decimal and I add a zero and bring it down, 180, that's like seven quarters to make $1.75, so 175. Subtract, and I'm going to get five, and add another zero and bring it down. And 25 goes into 50 twice. So what that means is x equals 6.72. So if this is talking about miles in an hour, in 8 tenths of an hour, they will go 6.72 miles. There's your answer. Okay, so now we're going to solve some problems, and we'll just kind of look at the problem and decide which method we want to use. And if there's a method that you prefer, you can do that. Um, Cross products will always get you the answer. Sometimes it's just not always the easiest one to do. Okay, so we're going to start with this problem right here. Jessica can type, it would help if you could see it. Jessica can type 248 words in four minutes. How many minutes will it take for her to type 434 words? 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to set up that proportion and these labels are your best friends. Okay, if I'm talking about words in minutes and how many minutes with words. So it does not matter if you put words or minutes on top as long as that you're consistent in both of your ratios to make them equivalent. So if I put words over minutes, again, it doesn't matter which one's on top as long as it's the same for both of them. When I had 248 words, that was in four minutes, and I wanna know how many minutes, so that's what I'm solving for, there's my X, if I had 434 words, okay? So I could say, what am I doing from here to here? And try to divide, but that doesn't look easy. I could try to do cross products, but then I'd end up dividing by 248, so that doesn't look easy. But I could say, well, what am I doing from here to here, right? So let's do 248 divided by four, because I could do that in my head. Four goes into 24 six times evenly, and then it goes into eight twice. So that means this is dividing by 62, right? So that means here I have to divide by 62. Okay, and sometimes, yeah, these are, it's some work to solve these problems. So I'm gonna do 434 divided by 62. Okay, it's not gonna go in there. So I'm gonna have to figure out how many times we'll go into 434. I'm just gonna guess, not because I've already done this problem and made it up myself, but I'm just gonna randomly guess. I wonder what 62 times seven is, complete guess. Let's see, seven times two is 14. Carry my one, that's 42 plus one is 43. Oh, look at that, it is seven. Ah, total coincidence. So, that means the answer is seven, that's seven minutes. Okay, now let's do another one. At the animal shelter, there were four cats for every three dogs. If there were 51 dogs, how many total animals were at the shelter? So I'm looking at cats, dogs, dogs. Oh wait, it doesn't say cats, it says total animals. So I wanna know about dogs and total animals. So dogs and total. It told me, it wants to know if there's 51 dogs, how many are there total? So that's what I'm solving for. So what information do I know to begin with? I had three dogs, but not for four total. What made up my total? I had three cats plus four dogs. So that's seven total animals, right? So that means my, um, I'm going to have seven right there. So I need to see, is there something I can do to solve this? Now, because I wanna show you cross products, we're gonna do cross products for this one, but it doesn't matter which way you do, okay? You might wanna do 51 divided by three and then multiply that, but I just wanna show you something different, okay? So I'm gonna start with 51 times seven. Seven times one is seven, seven times five is 35. So that's 357 equals, three times X is just three X. Okay, I'm trying to show you all the different ways. So solve it like an equation. I need to isolate X, so I'm gonna divide both sides by three. So I'm going to do 357 divided by 3. 3 goes into 3 once, which is 3, subtract to get 0, bring down my 5. It's going to go in there once, which is 3, subtract, I get 2, bring down my 7, I'm running out of room. 3 goes into 27 9 times, which is 27, so that means x is 119. So that means my answer 
is what? 119 total animals. Okay, let's do another one. On a road trip, let me move this up so you can see it. Okay, on a road trip, Mrs. Schuler travels 130 miles in two hours. At this rate, how many miles will she travel in 30 minutes? So I'm talking about 130, I'm talking about miles and hours and miles and 30 minutes. So I can either change this to minutes or I can change this to hours. But 30 minutes, it's easy. 30 minutes would be what? Half of an hour, right? So I could say one half or 0.5. Okay, so if I set this up of miles and hours, I have 130 miles in two hours, and that's equal to x miles in 0.5, right? Okay, so I can look for a relationship from here to here, here to here. Okay, there's a lot of different ways I can do it. So let's say that I want to know what am I doing from here to here. So I could do 130 divided by 2. 2 goes into 13 6 times, which is 12. 2 goes into 10 5 times. So that means I'm doing times 65. So that means here I need to do times 65. So I'm going to do 65 times 5 tenths. 5 times 5 is 25, carry my 2. 5 times 6 is 30, plus 2 is 32. And then I count my decimal places. There's 1, so there's going to be 1. So that means my answer is 32.5. That's 32.5 miles. Okay, last but not least. Well, we've got a couple more we're going to do. Okay, just hang in there with me. A boat traveled 27 miles in two hours. At this rate, how many miles will the boat travel in one fourth of an hour? I know apparently I liked miles and hours when I made up these problems. So I'm talking about miles and hours, miles and hours. So that's gonna be miles and hours. Okay, and again, this is miles and hours. So it said 27 miles in two hours. How many miles in one fourth of an hour? Dun, dun, dun. Okay, I can leave that as a fraction or I can turn it into a decimal. Um, either way. So if I do one fourth, that's uh, .25. That might make it easier. So I can decide, what am I doing here to get this? One thing I could do is say, what am I multiplying 2 by to get to 0.25? Right, so 0.25 divided by 2. So Sorry, just froze there. OK, so I want to know times what is there? So that means I'm going to do 0.25 divided by 2. There's a decimal. 2 goes into 2 one time, which is 2 subtract. I get 5. 2 goes into 5 twice, which is 4. Subtract, I get 1. Bring down a 0. And that's going to be 5, <laughs> which is 10. So it's 0.125. So that means I'm multiplying this times 0.125. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay, so I'm going to do 27 
My computer almost went to sleep. I guess I'm that boring. So 27 times 0.125, so I'm going to just put the 0.125 on top. Times 27. 7 times 5 is 30. Carry my 3. That's 14, 15, 16, 17. Carry my 1. 7 times 1 is 7 plus 1 is 8. 0, done with that, done with that, done with that. 2 times 5 is 10. Carry my 1. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. 2 times 1 is 2. And that is 13. That's 3. And how many decimal places? 3. So that is 3.37 miles. Right? Are you still with me? I'm putting myself to sleep, so you're probably bored too. All right, one more. That's the last one, I promise. Okay. All right. Angela buys three yards of fabric for $7.47. Then she realizes she needs two more yards. How much will the extra fabric cost? So I'm talking about yards and dinero. So yards and money. So if I have three yards is $7.47, then I want to know how much money is it going to cost for two yards. This is a great uh, cross-product one. I can just multiply and multiply. Okay, 7.47 times 2. That's 14. Carry the 1. 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1 is 9. 2 times 7 is 14. Two decimal places. So that's $14.94 and $14 equals 3 times x is 3x. Now I'm going to solve my equation. Dun, dun, dun. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. That cancels out. So I'm going to do $14.94 divided by 3. 3 goes into 14, 4 times, which is 12. Subtract, I get 2. Bring down my 9. 3 goes into 29, 9 times, which is 27. Subtract, I get 2. Bring down my 4. 3 goes into 24, 8 times, which is 24. Subtract, and I get 0. So that's $4.98. So how much is it going to cost for those two yards of fabric? $4.98. If you stuck through this whole video with me, I'm impressed because I probably would have turned it off by now. But thank you anyways. Have a fabulous day.